This video looks at the conversion from a transfer function to a state space model. Previous videos then showed how you could form a transfer function model from a state space model. In this video we're going to look at the reverse process, that is how do you find a state space model given a transfer function model. Reviewers are reminded however that a state space representation is not unique. There are several alternative state space forms that can represent the same transfer function model. We are going to use canonical forms because these can be particularly useful. Now for ease of algebra we are going to assume that the denominator emphasize that the denominator polynomial is monic. You can always achieve this by scaling all the coefficients as required. And for those who aren't sure, this is what monic means. It means that the coefficient of the maximum power is 1. What's the basic concept then? The approach we'll use here will begin by deriving the results for a transfer function with a constant numerator. So we're going to start with a simple example. Here we go. So you'll notice that the numerator has only a constant in it and we'll look at more generic numerators later. Now the advantage of doing this is it's clearly analogous to the ODEs which we covered in video 3. So if you look back at video 3 you'll see that we did state space models for this type of ODE and you'll notice that these two actually represent the same model. You'll see the k corresponds to the k there. You'll see the a n minus 1 corresponds there, the a1 corresponds there, the a0 corresponds there. So these two represent the same system. Now what we'll do next is we'll summarize the results from video 3, but if you want it more slowly then obviously go back and look at video 3. So if we had a state space model, here you can see I've done an nth order state space model and we introduce new states, x1 is dx dt, x2 is dx1 dt, xn minus 1 is dxn minus 2 dt and so on. Then by inspection we can write down a state space representation for this differential equation as follows. You'll see we've defined a state as having x dx dt, d2 x dt squared and so on up. We've defined the A matrix, which you'll see has got these ones in the lower diagonal, and then it's got the coefficients on the top row. And you'll notice the pairing, the A naught goes with X, which is what you expect from here. The A n minus 1 goes with X n minus 1, which is what you expect from here. Now just a reminder, that canonical forms can come in different fashions. Here you'll notice that what I've done is I've ordered the states in the opposite direction. I've now put x at the top and x3 at the bottom and you'll see as a consequence these a's now come in the bottom row and the a0 is now in the first column rather than the last column. But otherwise it's an equivalent transformation. So the reminder here is that the ordering of states is a user choice and this changes the implied A or B matrices. So the two examples just given simply reverse the order of the states and they both control canonical forms. But what's the key point? The parameters of the ODE, which were the A0, A1, A2 and so on, and so on appear explicitly in the A matrix and therefore we can write the A and B matrices by inspection. So what's our proposal? We can find a state space model for a generic ODE, we've done that in video 3 and reminded you here, but we've also recognized that this transfer function model represents the same ODE and you can also see that the coefficients are the same. So therefore all I'm going to do is say look if I've got this transfer function, I'm going to pretend it's this ODE and then I can write the state space model by inspection. So let's do an example. Here you can see the transfer function 4 over s cubed plus 2s squared plus s plus 3 and I can write the canonical form by inspection. You'll see the 3 
has gone here, the coefficient of 1 has gone here, the coefficient of 2 has gone here, and at the moment, I'm going to change this in a bit, the 4 has gone here. And I'm extracting x, which is the top element of the state space vector, and therefore I've got a 1 in the first column of C. So basically with this transfer function I've used results that I already know in order to give the answer by inspection. Now, how am I going to extend this to more complicated numerators? Because in general, a numerator is not just a constant. The state space model that we derived corresponds to something like this. You'll notice that I've now put 1 in the numerator just to keep life simple. So what happens if instead of x of s, I wanted w of s, and if you look, you'll see the difference is I've now got s in the numerator. Well, fortunately, because I know my Laplace transforms, I recognize that w of s is the Laplace transform of w, which is dx dt. So all I'm doing with this second transform is actually saying I want as an output dx dt not x. Now that's useful because the state w was already defined in my state space model. If you remember, my state space model had states like x, x dot, x double dot, and so on. So if all I want is x dot, I've already defined it. It's already one of my states. So I can extract it as an output. So what I'm going to do now is find a transfer function model which has as an output all the states. And this shows you a useful pattern. So here's my AB matrix. And you'll see I've put my coefficients A0, A1, A2, A3. So this is going to be a fourth order system. Now, the definition of the states. Because of the way I've done this, you'll see that x1 is dx dt x2 is d2x dt squared, and x3 will be d3x dt cubed. So I know what each of my states represents. What do I do next? Remind myself of the results of video 4, which is how do I do go from state space to transfer function? I use this formula here, si minus a inverse times b times u. So that's what I'm going to do now and see what I get. Well, if I solve for this x of s, you'll see in the top row, I get exactly what I would have expected, which is this transfer function with 1 divided by the denominator that I expect, where that denominator is based on the coefficients that I've got down here. Now, what do you think is going to be in the second row of this matrix? Well, the second row gives me x1 of s, and x1 is, you can see down here, dx dt. And therefore, the second row must have s over this denominator, because it's s times x. And if I go all the way to the bottom, then clearly, xn minus 1 is going to have an s to the n minus 1. So you'll notice that in this transfer function here, si minus a inverse times b, I've got components which have 1 in the numerator, s in the numerator, s squared in the numerator, all the way down to s n to the minus 1 in the numerator. So I can extract all these different powers of s as different rows of this matrix. So if I wanted the state space model for this system here, hopefully now the way to do it is relatively obvious. All I do is I find x of s, and you'll see here, I found this x of s, and you remember that that was given by si minus a inverse b. And then if I just want the s term, that corresponds to the second row. And therefore, the C matrix has a 1 in the second position and 0 elsewhere, and that will give me the result I expect. So in order to get an s in the numerator, I put a 1 in the second position of the C matrix. So this is going to be my C matrix. What happens if I want s to the r? 
<coughs> in the numerator. Well, hopefully it's obvious what I do now. I simply put this 1 in the r plus 1th position. Because the first position, you remember, corresponds to s to the naught, the second position to s, the third position to s squared, and so on. So this one will correspond to s to the r. So if I put a 1 in the r plus 1th position of c, that will extract xr, which is s to the power r. So find a, con a control canonical form for the following. So you'll notice I've got 4s over s cubed plus 2s squared plus s plus 3. So what I do, first of all, I define my a and b matrices. And you'll see in this bottom row, I've got the coefficient 3, the coefficient 1, and the coefficient 2 taken from that denominator. And I've got a 1 in the b matrix, so that if I was to find my si minus a inverse b, then I'd have all the terms that I want. Now, I want a numerator for s. s corresponds to x dot, which means I want the second column. And you'll see over here, I've taken the second column in my definition of c, and I've also put a 4 in because there was a 4 in the numerator of my transfer function. So the numerator coefficient is now in the C matrix. So that's quite an important point. So we've used the A and B matrix just to capture the denominator. And we've used the C matrix to capture the numerator. So there's a nice partitioning there or divide. Different example then. Find a control canonical form for the following. And you'll see this numerator is far more complicated. So again. I do my A and B matrix, and you'll see the coefficients 3, 1, 2, minus 1 have appeared down here in the bottom row as expected, and I've got a 1 in the bottom row of the B matrix. Then all I do is I look at the numerator, and you'll see I've got 2 times the underlying state, so 2 in the first position. 4s, so 4 times dx dt, 4 in the second position. 6s squared, so 6 d2x dt squared, 6 in the third position. And there's no s cubed term, so a 0 in the last position. So what do you see? This 2, 4, and 6 have been taken directly from the numerator coefficients. So the only change when I change the numerator is to the C matrix which has all the numerator coefficients. And I can do that because I've made sure that I've chosen this b coefficient to be 1. What about this example? A bit more generic. You see now I've got a generic numerator, generic denominator. Well, as ever, I can just put the denominator coefficients. Here I've put them on the bottom row. You can, of course, put them on the top row and use the other form if you want. I've put my 1 down here in the B matrix, and then all I've done is put the coefficients of the numerator into the C matrix. So I can write it down by inspection. Now, just for completeness, we're going to show that the states can be put in the reverse order. So here, I've used the ordering of states which goes um, x, x dot, x double dot, and so on. You can, of course, put the states in the opposite order and put the coefficients here on the top row. So you'll see now I've started from a n minus 1 down to a 0. And clearly the consequence is that when you look at this C matrix, you have to put the b's in the opposite order because the x's are now stored. If I give you your vector x, you'll see x is at the bottom now, then it's x dot, then x double dot and so on up. So depending upon the ordering of your x's, you obviously have to order your b coefficients in c accordingly. So in summary, we've illustrated how state-space models can be derived from transfer functions. We've emphasized the control canonical form as these can be constructed by inspection. But viewers should remember that the state-space models are not unique and different choices of states will lead to different choices for the A, B, C matrices.
We've not covered observer canonical forms and these will come up later when we discuss observers.